Welcome everyone. My name is David, software artist from Wasabi Wallet. The team and I are here to give you a brief presentation about our upcoming 2.0 release and how it will establish a new phenomenon in Bitcoin, which is privacy by default. How to achieve that? The spiciest Wasabi is here to tell. Let me introduce our first rockstar developer, the overlord of all graphs, the uncle of the new CoinJoin framework, Yuval. Hi, Yuval. Hi. So my name is Yuval, or nothing much on the intertubes. And I'm a code monkey and rabbit hole tour guide working on the Wasabi version 2.0. So behind like the this upcoming version of wasabi there are many contributions from many people and i wanted to give like an overview of some of that work the the work on top of which we're building as i kind of saw it all unfold so when when i first started taking bitcoin seriously i kind of experimented before i studied like how it actually works carefully and soon realized that i didn't have the level of control that i would like over my privacy and I became uh, rather uncomfortable with uh, how I'd already used it and using it more. I learned about some other cryptocurrencies like Zcash and Monero especially and that seemed promising for a while but like I eventually realized that the network effects behind Bitcoin seems to just matter more and um, that if I care about this problem I should be working on that. So the first kind of major idea that we're building on is starting with Wasabi originally it always relied on uh, uh, an idea called Chamian coin join. So the first part refers to David Cham, who invented uh, eCash and uh, blind signatures to make that uh, actually work. And the idea of applying that to collaborative privacy enhancing Bitcoin transactions seems to be originally due to Alex Mizrahi. And this was popularized by Greg Maxwell in a Bitcoin talk post, Coin Join Privacy for the Real World. So I first learned about Wasabi from Block Digest, I think like one or two days before Adam introduced it to the world at the Building on Bitcoin conference in July 2018. Adam, I later started it with uh, Lucas and Dan, who are going to talk uh, shortly. And they put together a minimum viable product just in time for the conference uh, as the legend goes. And they were later joined by David, who made the introduction earlier in time for the initial release uh, October that year. During this time, I was trying to like better understand uh, Bitcoin's privacy problems. And I was studying Wasabi before I was ready to actually uh, experiment with it, rambling about various ideas on the Slack channel. But when I found like a small denial of service issue in the first version of the protocol, uh, Adam started thinking like maybe I'm not so crazy after all. And uh, eventually like that led to the denomination multiplier improvement that was added in the protocol upgrade that followed my uh, disclosure. Adam like then put together this research club where anybody would um, be welcome to, to, to join. And we invited authors of various papers that uh, related to privacy in general or, or Bitcoin specifically. And a few authors presented there, I think most influentially, uh, Felix Maurer, who told us about the Knapsack paper, and Aviv Milner, who played a big part in uh, organizing uh, these meetings. So this continued, I think, throughout 2000, I think late 2018, 2019, and kind of got a, a bunch of interesting ideas and started working on the Wabi Sabi research about when the uh, UI team was uh, working on the Fluent design. So Dan is going to show you that soon. And in parallel to that, we began like earnestly pursuing like what is going to be the next protocol version for uh, Wasabi. How are we actually going to, to make that into a, a simple to use product by uh, improving the underlying technology. So Ishvan Saris joined us. He was a, a PhD student of uh, cryptography and we began studying the various options. And here I have a special thank you to Adrina Snick who uh, has made many contributions in the Bitcoin space, but it was his talk in uh, building the, the same conference build, building on Bitcoin 
introduced me to brand's credentials and he later shared pretty much all of the things that we used as inspiration for the the protocol and also Ruben Sampson who helped with uh, with some of the protocol improvements so as we were writing this paper for the new protocol things started kind of converging we decided to go with a scheme called Keyed Verification Anonymous Credentials, which is due to Greg Zavarucha, Sarah Michael John, Trevor Perrin, and Melissa Chase over a, a number of papers. And we owe a great debt to them for inventing the, the magic that we rely on, uh, as well as Greg Maxwell, again, for uh, his uh, confidential transactions ideas. These are like the same techniques are the basis of privacy in, in our protocol. So eventually that led to implementation work, and this is now coming to convergence where the, the UI and the protocol upgrades are uh, beginning to synthesize the, the next version of Wasabi. So I'm going to hand it back to David. Yes. Thank you very much, Yuval. This sounds like a great and long story. Might be interesting to go into it in details. Maybe. So, as he mentioned, I joined at the team at the time when 1.0 released. And uh, currently, we, that's the current version of Wasabi. And now we are preparing for 2.0, as it was also mentioned. And as a preparation, I would like to introduce you five most important change or feature in the perspective of 1.0. But first, I would like to introduce you another phenomenon, which is Wabi Sabi. Wabi Sabi is the name of the new, of our new coin join, uh, let's say framework. And the meaning of that word is the, the discovery of beauty in imperfection. So basically that's what we want to achieve here. And uh, yeah, so let's start with the first one. So the first new feature, it's instant privacy. So in the current Wasabi, the users have to take part in multiple coin join rounds to make their entire wallet private. Also, the bigger the wallet, the more fragmentation was added. With the help of Wabi Sabi, the user will be able to get decent privacy even after the first coin join. So yeah, it will be it will be much better in this sense. Second point, no minimum denomination, which is the PLEP compatibility feature with Wasabi with the current one. Uh, can be used by anyone for free at any time, but you are only able to use the building coin join features if you have at least around 0.1 Bitcoin, which wasn't a lot of money back in 2018, but now it's uh, quite a lot. And, and this limitation was added because of a technical reason, but it's we decided to somehow overcame this limitation and find a solution to this bottleneck. And it looks like we succeeded. So Wabi Sabi won't have this constraint. So now a much bigger, how to say, market or user space can uh, enjoy the benefit of this uh, feature. Third one, less change, the perfect mix. So with the current Wasabi, you can, after many rounds of coin join, you can make most of your funds private, but there is almost a small amount that remains unmixed. You know, the so-called toxic change. And it, there is, it is hard to, to do with anything with that. So Wabi Sabi has a higher output resolution, which means that most of the cases it can eliminate the change after coin joins because it will try to adapt 
the output amounts that can eat up your whole balance at once. The fourth feature is consolidate in CoinJoin trustlessly, which means that in the current Wasabi, the user can register at a maximum of seven coins per round. But with Wabisabi, there won't be any limitation on that. Furthermore, even every coin registration will be handled uh, separately. So you can anonymously consolidate coins in your wallet. That for that or thus reducing the fragmentation of the wallet. And the final is last but not least, the better block space efficiency, which is means that in Bitcoin, yeah, you, you might know that in Bitcoin, the more block space you use, the more network fees you pay for the miners. It can change rapidly, depends on the activity in Bitcoin. So fees can go high and can be very expensive. And coin join is a transaction on the blockchain. So the more we can fit into one coin join, the cheaper it will become for one specific user. And what we saw, we will try to find the best fit structure for every participant and try to fill up this transaction as much as possible. So we will have a better box space efficiency. Uh, thus, we will have a cheaper coin join. Thank you. This was the most five important features. So now I'm passing the word to Dan Wamsley. Hey everyone, hope you guys are all doing fantastic. So my name's Dan Wormsley. I've been involved in Wasabi since the very beginning back in Lisbon. I lead the UI team here at Wasabi and I want to tell you a little bit about the new UI, why we've done it, what our goals are for having a new UI and what our approach to the new the, the design of the new UI has been. So the real goal of the UI and the new Wasabi wallet is that we want to allow, have privacy for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're an advanced user or you struggle to use the uh, a computer or you're not technically literate. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to have the privacy that you should have. We also want to have privacy by default. That means just using Wasabi, uh, you will get a certain level of privacy without really having to, to think too much. And we also would like to have privacy without friction. So we don't want to do too much interaction with the UIs just to get the privacy. We want privacy to happen um, as frictionless as possible. So the UI team, we have a kind of approach to the UI and UX design. And to give you an analogy of that approach, most people at some point you have traveled on an airplane when you decide to travel to another country and the things that you as a passenger you're interested in is you want to buy your ticket, how much it costs, you want to know where you're going and how long it's going to take you to get there and maybe some extras you might want to know that you're going to sit next to a window and maybe you're going to get a glass of wine and a meal during the flight. But 99% of the people that are on the flight they don't care how the fuel is pumped around the aeroplane. They don't want to know or even care that the oil temperature and the dials in the cockpit, that's the business of the engineers and the pilots. Although those engineers and the pilots, they have a panel they can get to to see all of that. So that, that's kind of the guiding principle. The, the UI team should recognize this, that um, we, we want to make... The, the UI as simple as possible for everyday people. They get their privacy just by using the, the wallet without having to think too much. But the enthusiasts and the engineers and, uh, and the experts, 
they can open the engine panel, they can have a look inside, they can tweak some values. So that way we are able to satisfy all types of users because privacy is for everyone. Here I'm sharing with you now our new UI. This is what you would see in the um, in your, your wallet home screen when you're logged into your wallet. We have a dark mode. We have a light mode, depends on your preference. We have a focus on uh, readability and being able to find your way around the wallet in a nice and uh, intuitive manner. Okay, let's go for a live demo. So what could possibly go wrong, okay? <laughs> okay, so here I have um, Wasabi wallet. I'm going to log into my wallet by entering the password. A few seconds to access my wallet. Okay, so here I am at the homepage of my wallet. You can see, I can see my balance. I can see how much of my wallet is now private. I can see the recent transactions. So uh, imagine I, I want to send anonymously to Adam. I'll press on the send. <clears throat> when I click in the two box, because I have an address copied on my clipboard, it automatically knows that that's what I want to do. So it, the address is there. That's where I'm going to send the money. I can type in the, uh, uh, the amount. And then I will put a label to remind myself who it is that I'm sending the money to. And then I have a fee slider where I can choose how long I want it to take. But often the question is, where can I get the best benefit? Maybe I just want it to go as quickly as possible and I don't care about the fee, so I'll slide it over here. But if I'm concerned about saving money on network fees, uh, this graph gives me an instant view of where I can get the most benefit. I can see here, by if I go to somewhere between 12 and 24 hours, you know, I'm saving over 90% of the, the fees. I don't need to set it to one week. So, you know, I can, I'm not in a rush today, so I'll, I'll set the slider there. I can press continue. And because Wasabi has pre-mixed my coins automatically, it knows that I can build a transaction with my anonymous coins and uh, as a bonus without me having to think too much about me about it it's saying that it can even tweak the transaction a tiny tiny little bit if i send around one dollar more worth of bitcoin the transaction won't have any change so if i click on this one it will, will give me that or maybe i don't care it's still going to be an anonymous transaction i can press continue and now I'll get a quick summary of what I'm about to do, how many Bitcoins I'm going to send, the address that it's going to go to, how long it might take, and the fee that I'm going to pay. I can press confirm, enter my password for security, obviously. Continue. And now this is where Wasabi is doing something without you realizing. It's uh, sending the transaction, but it's doing it over an encrypted network called Tor, so that that is protecting your privacy without you even having to think about it. Okay, it's saying that my transaction has been sent successfully. I press done, and you can see it's flashing the transaction in the transaction list. It's pending, so I, I know straight away what is going on. Okay, so that's all I have to share today. I'll pass over to Lucas. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the next version of Wasabi Wallet. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dan. Okay, hi, all. My name is Lucas. I'm a Wasabi Wallet software developer. And I want to talk about the exciting features. And to me, features are exciting exciting or not, depending on how well they align with uh, our goal. That is, bring privacy to the Bitcoin ecosystem for everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean that not only for tech lovers only. But don't worry, uh, Wasabi will continue being probably the most attractive wallet for advanced users. <laughs> Before that, 
let me let me show you a, a little problem. This is a Wasabi wallet uh, user, right? He says, I need help with sending to the wrong wallet ID. I accidentally used a wrong wallet ID to move Bitcoin, blah, blah. It was accidentally a USD wallet ID. And it sounds a bit uh, unusual. Um, and the reason why uh, it is difficult to understand what uh, he says is because he's not a technically advanced uh, Bitcoiner, right? Uh, in the sense that he uh, doesn't name things in the right way, probably. They probably don't know what a uh, Bitcoin address is. I'm sure he doesn't know or he doesn't understand what the UDX mo UDXO model is and the its consequences, um, but he knows what he wants and he knows uh, the importance of maintaining his financial privacy uh, under control. That's why he's using Wasabi, right? So what the, the problem with Wasabi Wallet 1, why do we want to improve it even more? Because um, in Wasabi Wallet version one, the the UI it's a bit overloaded with concepts like coins, clusters, anonymity sets, privacy shields, spend the world coin, NQ, DQ coins, state like signing, waiting for confirmation, registering outputs, and that kind of stuff. You know, uh, things that we have been working hard to. To improve and in my opinion probably the best feature or the most exciting feature is that now we can hide by default the coin control feature basically because now we can do it right and um, we can um, automate the coin selection to make sure we we select coins even better than what a user can do it manually also Mm, there are higher chances that we can always automatically or manually make transactions uh, without change, as Dan showed us a minute ago. And why is this? Because basically, the new CoinJoin protocol is called Wabi Sabi, allow us to have unequal outputs, and those outputs or those values can be chosen in a very composable way. Uh, so we can basically compose any any number for a payment. Let me explain this in a, in a different way. Imagine you go to a store and you want to buy something that costs you uh, 12 euros. Yes, if you have two euro notes, 10 and, 12, and two, well, you don't need to receive change because that is the exact number, right? Well, but of course, if you have only 100 euros notes, you always need change. That composability that we have in the standard denomination, euros and, you know, just on all the, the, the fiat currencies, uh, it will be possible with uh, Wabi Sabi. Now, this protocol called Wabi Sabi is not other thing that generalized a uh, Tommy and Conjun protocol but that can, okay, based on a uh, K verification anonymous credentials, that in other words means that it is a much more flexible protocol that allows us to do all what was possible with zero link protocol, but more. For example, things that I, that I think are very, very promising are for the future. It's not something that is, it will be available in version 2.0, but, uh, Anyway, this is what excites me, <laughs> is that we are going to have a Tor Hidden Services, or the combination of Tor Hidden Services and uh, the Wabi Sabi Credentials System, what, by the way, uh, will allow us to have uh, unequal outputs, what <laughs> opens the door to a variety of peer-to-peer uh, -peer protocol for payments, not only for conjuncts, but also for other kind of uh, pay to endpoints, but especially in conjoints, where it is really interesting. Uh, so, better payments with peer to peer payment protocols, 
these are just a few payments to unknown uh, destinations is a way to pay when the receiver doesn't need to trust on on on, on the sender in the way that uh, the payment is not traceable i mean i as a payer cannot see where my money is going that's it's pretty amazing and it's not possible uh, right now in, in, in with any other technology payments to share uh, destinations is where participants can uh, using a, one of these peer to peer protocols to agree on sending money to a shared um, address that they control collectively and with pre-signed transactions that make sure that they cannot cheat one each other. So the the real output is not in the coin joint. So it's it's, it's really great. And other kinds that I I just call payment in coin joint. It can be payment from coin joint or or pay or paying uh, through a coin joint. Well, that is what I think is, is the most exciting part. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you for the presentation and thank you for your attention. Follow us on Twitter 